Bueno, muy buenos días a todas las personas que se van conectando a esta sesión informativa de Col Futuro con Southern California Institute of Architecture en Estados Unidos. Hoy nos acompaña Ángel Montes, él es director de admisiones de esta institución y nos va a compartir toda esa información de utilidad respecto a oferta académica, cómo postularse, qué opciones de financiación hay. Así que los invito y las invito a que se queden en toda la charla para así obtener toda esta información. Y en caso de que tengan dudas, preguntas, mientras Ángel nos da toda esta información, pueden escribirlas en la cajita de Q&A, donde al final vamos a responder todas esas inquietudes. Asimismo, recordarles que tenemos un convenio, así que ustedes pueden recibir un beneficio adicional si se postulan al programa Crédito Beca de el Futuro con alguno de los programas de esta institución. Así que pueden tener eso en mente, ya que probablemente Ángel lo tocará en algún momento de su presentación. Así que sin más introducción, gracias a todos por su participación y Ángel, puedes seguir con tu presentación. Muchas gracias, Debbie, y muchas gracias por la invitación. Estoy contento de estar aquí y hablarles de SciArc. Um, la, la, voy a hacer la presentación en inglés, ojalá que este, está bien para ustedes. Uh, y después puedo contestar las preguntas en español, pero la presentación la va a hacer en inglés. Y um, otra vez, muchas gracias por tenerme aquí. Entonces voy a empezar con mi presentación. Nosotros somos the Southern California Institute of Architecture, um, also known as SciArc. Um, we're located in Los Angeles, and we are one of the few schools that are solely dedicated to the study of architecture. So we were founded in 1972 by a group of faculty and students who wanted to approach the subject of architecture from a more experimental perspective um, that was currently offered by traditional institutions based on the concept for a college without walls. SciArc remains one of the few independent architecture schools in the world. Um, and to this day, we still approach architecture as uh, from an experimental perspective. Um, but as we have come, you know, 50 years from our inception, um, that is still ingrained in part of the curriculum, part of our culture um, that we carry at SciArc. Since then, again, we are a small school, um, but we are a pretty mighty school. Um, we consistently rank top 10 in the nation um, and There is a ranking that is done by Design Intelligence um, that really focuses on different aspects of architecture. So like part of communication skills, presentation skills, construction chosen methods. So you see all these different aspects of architecture that we really excel in. And these are ranked, uh, again, for schools all in the U.S. Um, and we consistently rank amongst the top 10. Um, again, we are currently the only school in, in the U.S. that's solely dedicated for architecture, both undergrad and graduate programs. Uh, we are overall 500 students that are split between 250 graduate and 250 undergraduate students. Um, our student body is represented by 46 different countries, um, and we have a student to faculty ratio of 12 to 1. Um, our school is always open. Uh, our students have access to the building 24 hours, 7 days. Uh, and we are um, over 80 of our faculty are practicing architects um, and they are fo focused on uh, design studios. Um, so a little bit about Los Angeles. Uh, we believe that architecture should be practiced in a uh, big city, um, not something that should be practiced in Uh, like a monastery where you're not uh, exposed to culture, where you're not just uh, exposed to um, kind of the, the urban uh, landscape. And that's really something that we, we feel very fortunate to be part of Los Angeles, a uh, growing city um, and specifically in the arts district. Um, we are about a block away from this image that you see. Um, and the arts district is a part of Los Angeles. It sits about... Um, I guess the most one of the famous landmarks um, is like the Crypto Arena or the Staples Center Convention Center. We're about two miles away from there, uh, probably even less. Um, but the the Arts District is unique in the sense that it does house a lot of um, museums, cultural production, um, and we're happy to be a part of that um, as part as an exposure to our students that again, feeds uh, into the curriculum, feeds into what students are exposed to even outside of the curriculum. Um, talk a little bit about leadership because we, we do feel that that is important. 
Um, we are we have our current CEO uh, and president, Hernan Diaz Alonso, um, who runs and oversees the university. Um, our vice director is John Enright, and you see Tom Main um, there. Ellen Manfredini, who runs our graduate program, both our MR1 and MR2. And then David Rui, who runs our postgraduate programs, um, also known as EDGE. Um, a little bit, again, just more in the numbers uh, to kind of give you an idea of like how influential we are um, in architecture. Um, we currently have two uh, Pitzker Prize winners on our board uh, of trustees, um, Frank Gary and Tom Main. We have over 1.5 billion assets of investment of developers uh, on the board of trustees. Um, that really does help with development curriculum um, and networking. Uh, we have two AIA gold medals on the board of trustees. Um, over 40 cycle alum work at Gensler in Los Angeles, and um, a little bit more accolades at the bottom that you can kind of see. Um, and again, this is kind of a review, kind of a broad sense of what we can expect. You have Tom Main there. Um, again, iconic building in Los Angeles, the Los Angeles uh, Walt Disney Concert Hall done by Frank Gehry, uh, building by Tom Main in San Francisco. And then Eric Owen Moss, who also still teaches at SciArc, uh, was very influential in the city of Culver City, which is, again, a, a city within Los Angeles County. So faculty, we're really proud of our faculty and what it comprises. Uh, we do think that the way that we teach at SciArc, it is more of a mentorship, a peer-to-peer -peer, um, exchange of ideas. Um, and that's why we really highlight our faculty. So we have a very diverse range of faculty, um, both from backgrounds and gender. Um, we're very happy in the way that we've mixed um, our faculty and they're at the top of their of their um, career. And so these are the, the people that are teaching at SciArc and that are exposed to the students. And again, just going a little bit over it um, and I'll get into the programs um, now. So two uh, programs that we offer and it's based on the field of study and I believe um, so this is our MRC one program. Traditionally, what we see from uh, students from the Pobletura program, they apply to the MRC two program. And the reason is that they have degrees in architecture. Um, the MRC one is specifically for students that don't have um, an accredited degree in architecture. So typically we'll have students that have a bachelor's degree in design, a bachelor's degree in animation or graphic design, um, interior design or engineering, neuroscience. So that's the type of student that comes into our MR1 program. Um, and as you'll see through the presentation, um, both of our programs are NAB accredited, which is an important part or aspect of having a professional degree in the United States. Um, after, upon graduation, you're able to do exams and become a licensed architect, or, uh, architect in the US. So I touch upon the NAB accreditation because, again, this is for both our programs. Um, if you are become, or if you're looking to become a licensed architect in the United States, and typically it's also approved um, internationally, but you would have to go through a different process to get that certified. And then, of course, we have our MRT program, which is a two-year program, but it is again somebody that has an already an undergraduate degree in a field of architecture. Um, so the MRC one program, um, it's two years of core, meaning that we really focus on developing the students' core competencies of architecture. And then the, the, the last year we call vertical studios, which I'll go a little further into the presentation. So the first semester, um, students are working with kind of volumes, um, volumes and shapes, geometric shapes, get an idea of how space and, um, space and visual uh, effects composition of a project. Um, and so these are just a kind of array of topics that we cover um, and are produced during the first year, or sorry, first semester of our MRC1 program. And then second, we develop a little bit more of going into digital space and working with the digital um, to really uh, go from physical to, to virtual. And again, you see, this is again the second semester. Um, and again, I'll reiterate: this is this is this program specifically the MRC one is for students that don't have a background. So you can just see how quickly they develop an aesthetic, they, how quickly they develop um, creating um, these types of um, digital representations. Um, on the second year, again, we're going through the core competencies. So now that the, the 
projects become a little bit more complex. Um, we're adding buyers, we're adding uh, mass, um, and now we're growing in scale um, in the production of, of these projects. And then this is the spring semester, we're working a little bit more with the city now. So again, we start from a smaller scale the first years, and then we continue to build up the curriculum um, to really uh, consider how massing, how size impacts uh, the city that, that they're working on. And again, just different type of materials. Another topic of, of the program that really covers um, what what students really covered through the whole um, first two years of core um, and then this one and you know i'll cover the third year and this first year uh, last year of the mr2 program because it goes into the what we call verticals um, but the mr2 program this is typically what i believe most of the students um, will apply to or will be eligible for um, this is a two-year program um, and Again, we build off of what students already come with. So this is already a project that has that incorporates a lot of, of the technical aspects of architecture, but now using digital um, to really push the envelope of how visual representation can um, create uh, and affect the city. So we are you're already kind of working on. Um, different aspects of architecture, whether it's materiality, whether it's structure, physics, um, and then of course the aesthetics of your project. You can. So we're working at rendering, working within the city. And this is from digital to physical. Again, you have physical on the left, digital on the right, and vice versa. These are both physical models. These are one digital, one physical, and again, just using different materiality to, to work with. So Vertical Studio, um, at the end of the program, you, there are uh, what we call Vertical Studios, and this is really, uh, some schools will call it um, electives, elective studios. So the reason why we call it vertical studio is that we have it's integrated with different programs. So, for example, a, a vertical studio can can have uh, students at the undergraduate level, graduate and postgraduate level, both MR1, MR2, and then EDGE. Um, what these programs do is that you're exposed to different instructors. So, for example, we had Frank Gary teach one studio, one vertical studio um, at Zyrk, and they had the topic was prisons. Um, so they worked on that. Um, and typically it's only open, again, it's only open for fourth and fifth year students at the undergraduate level. And then at the graduate level, you have the third year of your MR1 program or the second year of the MR2 program. So again, students are both technically um, sound in developing projects. And so they work either in collaboration or independently to for their projects during vertical studios um, and the topics range. So this one has to do a little bit more about facades um, so that's kind of what that looks like. This is a competition studio um, where this project actually won the competition in, in France. And so this um, organization actually flew out the whole studio to France to be able to pro, uh, present the project. Um, the, th this vertical studio has to do a lot more with visual representation. Um, and so you can see it's, it's a wide range. This one is using augmented reality. Um, unfortunately, it's a still image, but um, again, it goes from augmented reality, AI, physical models, um, look at working with facades, looking with plinths. So it, there's a range of topics that are presented to the students um, at the beginning of that semester. And then the students select which top three studios that they would like to be a part of. And then it is based off of uh, the ranking of the students, and that's where they are placed in their studio of topic. Um, one of the things that we get by students is like the projects don't look buildable, doesn't look realistic. Um, but part of the NAB accreditation is that we we are um, that our students are sound technically. So we do have a variety of applied studies courses that are part of the core cur curriculum for each program. 
And again, we one of the things that it's a little bit different than traditional schools is that we don't focus on precedent. So a lot of this, the work that you're doing um, for an applied studies class is based off of the projects that you created in the first year. So you dissect your project and you actually build plans for it and they have to be structurally sound. So again, it build, it's using um, your projects to be able to further study it and develop this, um, develop your expertise in this matter. And again, sections, different ways to represent it. Um, Then visual studies, it's, I believe, something that I would say what we're most known for. So again, this is part of the core curriculum. You have different faculty that work with this specialized in visual studies, and this is your core seminars. Um, and it is just a study of, of visual and aesthetics. Um, so there's different exercises here um, that further develop that and that you can see throughout the projects that you saw throughout the projects, how they are incorporated. So yeah, you can work for different scales. It's all dependent on with light, with colors, of course. Um, but this is all part and based off of what students um, and faculty kind of work together to, to represent. So thesis. So we are still uh, very proud to have thesis. Um, some of the schools have done away with thesis, but we feel like it's a very important part of architecture uh, education and something that we really highlight um, during the process. And it's really, it's a huge production that we have at SciArc where we invite guesters, uh, we invite um, faculty from other schools, we invite um, firms. And for us, it's really, the importance is, is on the student to be able to present and really launch their career um, based off of their projects. So this is kind of the their first um, the first set of ideas that are set really to the architecture community as a professional. Um, and it really does take a whole different um, idea. So the thesis can be done either um, in a group or individual. Um, most of the students select to do it individually, which is fine. Um, and you work a year during for your thesis. Um, you start with doing research, working with a mentor, a faculty member that kind of guides you through your process. Um, and again, culminating at the end of it with a huge celebration um, and a way of representing your ideas. Um, and you're talking to, again, guesters from all over the world that we invite. Um, and everything is filmed, recorded and then provide it to the student um, as, as kind of their crowning moment. Um, and yeah, this topic, th the way that these um, problems are tackled by the student using architecture um, just ranges from augmented reality, um, AI, photos, um, buildings. So it's a, a wide range of how to present solutions. Um, and that's one of the key things that is amazing when you're going through this uh, when you're attending this um, thesis, it's uh, quite an experience to see kind of how rangeful these solutions can be. And again, just um, work that's done throughout the year. And so, yeah, we have in-house um, in the building um, fabrication facilities, um, your typical analog fabrication that does woods, metals, and plastics, um, all industrial grade machining that students have access to. Um, we have our digital fabrication lab, we call it the magic box, and we have everything from 3D printing, CNC milling, laser cut. Uh, we also have, um, we have 3D, um, well, well, we have 3D printing and, and CNC machining, but these are all throughout the whole um, the building. Uh, we have a robot house, so these are five independent moving arms that um, mostly are, are used for um, visual study courses, um, but also done for Arctic Technologies, which is one of the programs that we offer in EDGE, so it's specifically mostly for a very particular area of, of study. Um, vacuum forming. 
So in addition to the curriculum, we have what we call public programs. These are things that we, that's our kind of um, produce and whether it's faculty, whether it's an invited guest, and we really uh, promote it to the Los Angeles area and invite people to come to SIARC to view this and to have conversation with, with us um, to tackle different pro uh, projects, problems, or um, things that are just happening. And so we're really big on being involved in our community and really having a stake and an, a voice. Um, and so this is, of course, open to people from Los Angeles, but it is a big, crucial aspect of um, indirectly influencing and being a part of what you have to um, what you have access to and also just kind of making sure that we're aware of what's going on in our city um, and again affecting how we design and how we think about addressing these problems with architecture. Of course like any architecture school we have a great lecture series. Um, here are some of the highlights of what we've had. Slavok Zizek, Tom Main, um, Simon Critchley, Barbara Bestro, we have, you know, this changes every year, every semester. Um, so one of the things about our lectures is it's also done uh, online. So if you're not able to come to SIARC, you're able to view it via, uh, via YouTube. So we, we broadcast those live so you can go to our website and be able to see um, what lectures we have and you're able to participate through there. Um, we also do the uh, have Q&As. So if you have a question during one of the presentations, you can type it in and it could be selected as one of the questions that are asked to the presenters. So another thing that you can look at and be able to be part of the conversation at SIRE. So yeah, we have uh, satellite programs, um, Bogota, China, Mexico City, Mumbai. Uh, we have a study abroad program um, that this summer, it wasn't Tokyo, and they're actually, they went to Mexico City. Um, and then we have exchange programs with RMIT, so the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. We have one with Vienna, and we also have one with the Bartlett. And then we'll I'll go through this, and this one doesn't apply to, to you guys, but um, yeah, so I know one of the topics that we covered is, um, or that you'd like me to cover is kind of how do you finance your education at SIAR. Um, but uh, one of the things is that we actually hold a scholarship specifically for Col Futuro that we match um, the award that is given by Col Futuro. Um, so we match it and that is money that we um, award to the student without any um, strings attached. So pretty much you, if you're a recipient of Col Futuro, we match it and that's given to you for the extent of the program. And so that is a scholarship, and that's something that we do through um, collaboration of Col Futuro and the strength of the application. Um, but if Col Futuro awards you your award, we automatically pretty much match it um, because um, Col Futuro does a great job of kind of um, finalizing um, and making sure that they are filtering the the applicants. And so um, we we have a great uh, history with. Col Futuro awardees, and um, yeah, that's something that we can hope to continue to do. And if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer them in the Q&A. Listo. Bueno, entonces, muchas gracias, Ángel, por la presentación, por toda la información de utilidad. Mientras que las personas de la sesión hacen sus preguntas en la cajita, voy a leer las que recibimos por redes sociales, entonces voy a tomar la más frecuente y es sobre el tema de la homologación. Entonces, aquellas personas que van a hacer sus programas en la universidad en Estados Unidos deben homologar su título de arquitecto en un caso muy puntual. No, y este, no, de, lo, lo que deben que hacer es nomás este, darnos las, el transcript. No sé cómo, cómo se, pero con eso es, es, es lo que necesitamos y no debe que ser algo fijo como eso, pero este, cuando no lo, no los dan, nosotros podemos, este, transleer y, y ver cómo, en cuál programa pueden, este, aplicar. Listo. Y la siguiente pregunta es un poco más específica sobre, de pronto, si nos puedes mostrar si en la página web tal vez se puede encontrar información sobre los precios, sobre los requisitos que tienen los programas como tal. Sí, y eso lo puedo hacer ahorita. 
Entonces aquí está. Entonces aquí está nuestra aplicación. Y aquí está cómo aplicar. Y esto pues va a ser este... Va a ser updated en unas cuantas semanas para reflejar el Fall 2024. Pero lo que nosotros necesitamos para cualquier programa es la aplicación, un portfolio de que tenga de 15 a 35 este, páginas de, de proyectos que han hecho. El personal statement que, que este, habla al topic de, de cada programa porque MR1, MR2... Y también los programas de Edge tienen diferente, este, un prompt diferente. Entonces, nomás que, respuest, que res, este, hagan la respuesta basado a ese programa. Dos a tres este, letras de recomendación. Un resume. Y es, es pues casi lo necesario. El TOEFL o IELTS o Duolingo es nomás para ver cómo este habla en inglés y luego el transcript del colegio es lo que requerimos. Okay. Es, el precio de, de cada programa es, es, este, es por semestre y ahorita todavía no sale el costo del año de, 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 de 2024, pero por ahorita estamos este, proyectando que va a ser 25 mil este, al semestre, entonces 50 al año. Pero para Edge, porque son, es un programa que es, son tres semestres en un año, serían este 75 mil por, por el título. Y todo eso está aquí en esta página, sart.edu. Y pueden, cuando lo visiten para navegar, es cómo aplicar, es Prospective Students, y luego nomás el programa que están interesados, como Postgraduate Degrees, y aquí pueden haber qué es lo que requerimos para cada programa para aplicar. Listo. Y de ahí, antes de movernos a la pregunta que hace Kiara en el chat, si quieres, Ángel, puedes ir a la cajita de Q&A, ya que es una pregunta un poquito más larga, si sí uh -huh. puedes leerla para de pronto ahorita darle la, la solución a esa pregunta que nos da Kiara. Ok. Y si mientras quiero... tanto, eh, te va a hacer esta pregunta un poquito más básica, pero sí es muy frecuente acá en las redes, y es el tema del idioma. Entonces, tú dijiste que se debe cumplir con TOEFL, con IELTS, con Duolingo. Entonces, sí. ¿se podría decir que para lograr ser admitido es necesario tener el nivel del idioma? ¿No hay posibilidad de que ustedes de pronto admitan condicionalmente a la persona y luego esa persona demuestre que tiene el nivel? Sí, esa es buena pregunta. Sí, y sí podemos hacer la admisión condicional. Y la condición que hacemos es, este, si no... Uh, no, no tienen el score requerido, entonces nosotros los hacemos que hagan un, un workshop en julio y okay. los preparamos para que estén listos por lo menos el, como lo, los, los, este, el terminology que usen para, en arquitectura. Entonces eso es lo que hacemos tu, durante el workshop, y, pero sí, lo admitimos condicionalmente a, este, okay. para entender para el test. Um, Listo. Luego Kiara tiene de su, este, tiene un, de, un degree de industrial engineering, master, in, uh, un MBA. Um, sí, entonces la pregunta es que si cuál programa sería basado en, en que podría aplicar y sería el MR1. Um, pero también recomiendo programas de especializaciones dependiendo en qué quería eh, quiere gana, enfocarse porque tenemos cinco programas en, de, de un, un año pero serían es más dedicados a los estudiantes que ya tienen como experiencia en arquitectura este, para ti Kiara yo recomiendo el MRC1 el MRC1 programa es específicamente diseñado para estudiantes como tú que tienen ya un grado de tienen dos grados pero tal vez si quieres ser an architect or really work in architecture, um, the MRC one is ideally for, specifically kind of like for you. Um, and there are scholarships for that. So um, typically for um, students that are part of Cobalturo, it's, it's we match it. So typically um, how that ends up working or the breakdown is that we cover half of the tuition and Cobalturo covers the, uh, the other half. And that's kind of how that works. Um, 
uh, for for this type of um, scholarship. Listo, bueno, entonces si tienen también más preguntas como quiera, pueden ponerlas en la cajita de Q&A, voy con otra pregunta de redes y ya sobre el tema de costo de vida, entonces de pronto existe esa creencia que claramente estudiar en Estados Unidos es un poco costoso, entonces si de pronto podrías darnos un estimado de cuál podría ser ese presupuesto que las personas vayan estimando para hacer su posgrado en un país como Estados Unidos. Sí, claro, este... Sí, las cosas sí son claras en, en Los Ángeles, no, no hay nada de, este, de mentir, pero usualmente el presupuesto sería como 25 mil al año, pero también depende de, de cómo este, viven o cómo este, quieren compartir esas, ese costo. Porque usualmente aquí este, unos estudiantes dicen que pues, el primer año es más caro porque deben que agarrar pues, el el departamento, el, el furniture, um, o, o si quieren vi vivir solos, eso cuesta pues mucho más. Este, hay estudiantes que vienen y ya vienen con este, saben o conocen a, a gente, o de aquí, este, durante el proceso de aplicación, conocen a gente que están aplicando igualmente y hacen el, el este, se unen y agarran un departamento juntos, ya está furnished, entonces el costo sí varía, pero este, algo que es importante y algo que mucha gente no, pues este, durante el proceso de la visa es el departamento de educación, el CIBES y todo eso, este, quiere o requiere que prueben una cantidad este, para, para nosotros iniciar la, el proceso de la visa. Y eso usualmente requieren que, que vean de 8 mil dólares en el, en el banco. Pero con las becas y con el, el préstamo, entonces reduce es, ese costo que requieren y lo que sobra o lo que falta que deben que enseñar al gobierno serían este, por, por lo menos como 15 mil dólares es lo que vale, este, sale saliendo. Listo. Y de ahí también vamos a tocar el tema de la acomodación. Entonces, para aquellas personas que están buscando de pronto la acomodación en residencia universitaria, ¿se ofrece este servicio o de pronto no se cuenta con ello? Nosotros sí, no, no tenemos este housing de, que sea parte de, de SARC, pero hay dos departamentos, unidades grandes, usualmente son donde se, se quedan nuestros estudiantes. Y este... No, no es parte de la universidad, pero de, de, de tiro es, es cruzando la calle de, do, de los dos lados y es algo más este, cómodo, afor, este, affordable para los estudiantes. Ok, listo. Y ahora sí vamos quizás con una pregunta un poco más general, que va más de parte de Col Futuro. Y aprovechando que tú eres el director de admisiones, de pronto tienes mucha experiencia sobre el tema, has, dicho, has visto muchos casos, perfiles, de pronto, ¿cómo podrías resumir ese candidato ideal que va a tener éxito en su aplicación a los programas que ustedes ofrecen? Sí, lo, lo que nosotros vemos, um, y esto mejor lo, lo hablo mejor en inglés, pero este, lo, lo que nosotros vemos más... Um, success in the application process is really a, a passion for architecture. So Kiara is like a perfect example of what we're kind of seeing in the sense of maybe you don't have a background in architecture, but you are interested in pursuing architecture. So we want to see how or what have you done to, to showcase that. Um, so whether it is participating in information sessions, participating in internships, participating in summer programs that help you develop portfolio or um, showcasing aspects of architecture, um, whether it's digital, virtual, um, photography, um, molding, like anything that can be construed as like artistic. Um, we we want to see that. We want to know why you're passionate. So one of the things is that like Sark is a school of architecture that was made by architects for architects. So we really kind of drive that. Uh, meaning that there is so much passion for architecture in our institution that we want to see how you uh, have 
conveyed that. So that's kind of like the, the biggest indicator for us of how successful you'll do, uh, you'll be. Um, so this is like in this type of environment where um, faculty students literally breathe architecture. Like they, they are consumed and involved and their whole life is surrounded by our, um, architecture. So that's one of the ways that you can convey it is like in your personal statement, in your portfolio, the, the, the two, in, um, two indicators. Um, and then another important one is, is your transcripts, your grades. Like um, architecture, it's a very rigorous um, degree program. Uh, it is very time consuming. So your, your grades are a great indicator of seeing how well do you manage your time? How well do you manage tasks? And can you submit things on time? Can you um, follow direction? So that's what a grade and transcript really shows us as an institution. So um, if I would have to categorize or uh, rank the top kind of three things would be your passion for architecture, um, your transcripts, and then conveying that in a portfolio, in a, in a visual way. Listo, muy claro, Ángel, muchas gracias. Y vamos a concluir con la última parte y es de pronto información de un punto de contacto, si tal vez puedes poner en el chat de pronto ese correo electrónico o algún grupo donde las personas que están aquí de pronto tienen dudas o más adelante tienen preguntas sobre un proceso de admisión donde podrían comunicarse. Claro. Y lo hago el chat. Y sería... Okay, voy a poner el de mi oficina. Sorry, you. Luego, el mío personal. Les aviso que el mío sería, no, no serían las respuestas inmediatas. Admission that's art to you. Si necesitan una pregunta, respuesta inmediata, ese sería el más este, eficiente para que la respuesta en, en algo este inmediato. Listo. Y se me fue una pregunta que hicieron acá sobre fechas de admisión. En fechas de, sí, bueno, donde empieza el proceso de postulación. De pronto, ¿podrías compartirnos las próximas fechas? Sí, este, para nosotros sería el febrero, el 15 de enero del 2024 sería el, la... Ese es la, la fecha que es la ideal para que los estudiantes apliquen. Nosotros somos Rolling Admissions, que significa que este, aceptamos aplicaciones después del de 15 de enero. Pero el 15 de enero sería el priority deadline que o, este, usualmente mayoría de nuestros estudiantes aplican y es donde ofrecemos más becas y, y um, atención a esas aplicaciones. Después de eso eh, sería Rolling. Ok, listo. Bueno, con eso sí vamos ya a concluir. Vuelvo a agradecerte por el tiempo, por la presentación, por responder todas las preguntas que recibimos y también agradecerles a las demás personas que se conectaron a la sesión. Ya tenemos la información de contacto de Ángel y de la universidad en caso de que ustedes quieran seguir el proceso y concluyo eh, recordándoles el convenio que se tiene con Colfuturo. Entonces, como lo mencionaba Ángel, pueden obtener una ayuda para financiar ese programa de posgrado Así que los esperamos tanto desde la universidad, los espera con el futuro en el proceso y muchos éxitos para todos. Que tengan un buen resto de tarde. Muchas gracias.